It's the Sooners! It's the Longhorns! OU Texas Saturday at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas! You're fired up for the game, right? It's going to be a lot of points in the game, right? <laughs> we might even see some good defense, right? Ah, uh, shit, no, we're not. <laughs> we're not going to see good defense in this game. That's, in that part, very obvious. I mean, both pass defenses have been dreadful, ranked outside the top 100 in pass you know, efficiency. In fact, they've looked like deficients. And the Sooners, even though they're a 10 and a half point favorite in this game, if you've seen this game for the last three years, did Oklahoma look like a team that should have been favored by double digits? No, they lost three years ago. Two years ago, should have lost. It was a gift from Texas that it wasn't. And then last year, they couldn't protect Baker Mayfield to save their skin. Deontay Foreman had a huge game in Texas. Despite being a double digits underdog, won the game. And at that point, we're thinking, uh-oh, this is when Charlie Strong, who turned things around at Louisville, who was a terrific defensive coordinator during Florida's national championship run in 08, this is when we start seeing him flex his muscle and say, hey, Texas football's back. Of course, we were kind of fooled at that time. But still, Texas owned the Sooners last year. And 10.5-point favorite the Sooners are. But I'm telling you, Sooner fans, don't look at that line and think that's how the game's going to go. It's really, really going to be, to me, a question of which team enters this game wanting it more. I do believe Texas um, will fight hard for Charlie Strong. I think they like him. And they don't want him to get fired. But I'm going to be honest with you, if Texas loses three more games, they go 7-5, and five, I think he's out. There's that guy at Houston named Tom Herman, who Texas knows they got to get in the front of the line to try to get him because LSU is going to want him, and I know USC will want him as well. So if Charlie Strong can't deliver a terrific coaching stretch these next eight games, starting this Saturday in Dallas against the Sooners, I think Charlie Strong better be looking for a job elsewhere because he'll be gone. Texas is too big of a job. Their boosters donate way too much money to sell for mediocrity. And so far, he is still a below 500 coach career-wise at UT. But I do think Texas will play hard for him. I think Oklahoma will finally come into this game ready to be physical. The question is, can they out-physical Texas? I'll, I'll stress that again. OU will be physical in this game. But can they out physical Texas? That's the part I don't know. You know, the last three years I have drank the Kool Aid thinking the Oklahoma, okay, all you need to do is mention the word Texas, and bam, they're fired up. They're ready to go. That wasn't a problem in the 2000s for the most part. It's been a problem, though, the last three years is the players caring about this game more than Texas. They haven't, and Texas has showed, regardless of record, regardless of what Vegas said about this game, regardless of how Texas did the week before. The Longhorns on the field look like the better team. So don't let the records, don't let what happened last week fool you. No. No, you will play hard, but will they play hard in Texas? That's the mystery. And we'll find out at 11 a.m. Saturday. That's right, 11 a.m. Saturday kickoff. So Friday, don't stay up way too late. Otherwise, you might miss kickoff. And by the way, if you're tuning into ABC on Saturday, you're going to get some different game because the game for the first time in, golly, since I can remember, will not be on broadcast television. It'll be on cable. It'll be on FS1. So keep that uh, change in mind. FS1 has this game. And nationwide, I can honestly say I really don't know if too many people care about this game. That wasn't the case in the 2000s. It wasn't even the case early this decade. And the reason is because at least one of these teams uh, was in national championship contention. And usually both teams were in national championship contention when they played this game. It would battle on the same weekend as Florida State and Miami as they are this year. And the game of Texas versus Oklahoma, neutral side, you know, both teams have to travel about 180 80 miles uh, to get to Dallas. You know, the, the cool aspect of the Texas State Fair, splitting the Cotton Bowl. Of course, they even expanded the stadium, seating capacity-wise, you know, earlier this century to accommodate more fans from both sides. This game with the tradition, the terrific players, the coaches that have come from it, the upsets, the memories. This game has garnered so much nationwide attention as one of the great robberies. This year, I think other than, than the schools themselves, the states themselves, I really don't know if people care about Oklahoma, Texas. And that's what happens when you have two teams that enter this game for the first time since 1998 where both have at least two losses. Hard to believe. Looking at the injuries for the Sooners, Tay Evans done for his career. The concussions were just too much. Really shame because this guy really worked his tail off to make himself a starter at linebacker. But Tay Evans is done. And uh, Matt Diamond, 
probably won't play uh, this Saturday. Didn't see him play last Saturday against TCU. And Will Johnson at defensive back, questionable. Didn't see him play against the Horned Frogs last week either. But good news, though, looks like DJ Ward will be back at defensive end. They'll need him. Um, he's probable. Uh, Jonathan Alvarez on the offensive line, probable as well. He could play guard. He could play center. Parrish Cobb at corner. Looks like you'll have him available. And Baker Mayfield took a hard shot right before halftime against TCU. Did play the second half. Um, looks like those center fans won't have anything to worry about. Looks like Mayfield will play on Saturday. Whew. Looking at Texas, though, they're just as banged up entering this game. They, they had injuries before the season, and, and now um, they're not going to have uh, Chris Warren the third, the terrific running back. The knee injury, uh, too much of an issue, won't play this Saturday. That hurts him. Deontay Foreman, um, you know, rib injury. Um, I heard one website saying abdominal injury. If you watched last week's game against Oklahoma State, you might remember Foreman was running with the ball, and then he purposely went down, went down on his own. I'm thinking, what the heck was that? Did it for a good reason, though. When he got up, uh, Foreman was really favoring his side big time. It's one of those injuries I've in a college football game I've never I've never seen before in that fashion. But from what I've heard, he's practicing this week, and even once we're said he's 100%. Now, I don't know if he's really 100%, but I do think he will play uh, this Saturday against um, Oklahoma. Wide receiver um, uh, Ja'Cory Warwick. For the Longhorns, didn't, didn't make the trip last week in Stillwater. Questionable for this week. And offensive line is an area where Texas has been severely banged up in even before the season started. And Kent Perkins was one of those guys up front. Um, he is probable for this week, though. You might remember against Notre Dame uh, got hurt. But the guy has managed to bounce back anytime an injury has gotten in his way. And he won't enter this game 100%, but it looks like he will play against the Sooners. Of course, one of the big reasons why maybe the nation doesn't care too much about this game is because they know they're going to get a video game-like score. Um, I imagine the total for this game, which I have not seen yet. I've seen the point spread, which is 10.5 for the Sooners. I imagine that total, which is the combined score from both teams, is going to be ridiculous, probably somewhere in the 70s or low 80s. And that's to be expected when you have two pass defenses that haven't been able to cover anybody, okay? They haven't been able to cover anyone. And the Sooners enter this game 122nd in the country in pass efficiency. Just embarrassing. Giving up 13 touchdowns. And, of course, Kenny Hill, I mean, I mean, he looked like Peyton Manning in that game last week despite the Horned Frogs losing. He had, I think he had five touchdown passes in the game, um, a plethora of rushing yardage, and he got several receivers involved. And the Sooners call it just being out of position or just not knowing how to cover anybody. But the Sooners, um, especially in that fourth quarter, we're getting torched, and of course got torched in the opening quarter too. So I think the big thing will be pressure, getting pressure on the QB. Um, at times we saw that against TCU, but that would be as a result of a safety blitz or as a result of a corner blitz or as a result of blitzing your linebackers. Front four, they're very good against the run, are the Sooners. And of course, we mentioned the game last week that Charles Walker had. He was valuable. Linebacker, you know, Oboe was, was big time, especially with that sack late. That, you know, helped prevent TCU from going in for the game-winning score um, in OU's win. Big thing will be pressure because Shane Bouchelle will pick Oklahoma apart. He'll do what Kenny Hill did last week. He'll do what, you know, JT Barrett of Ohio State did weeks before. And he'll do what Greg Ward Jr. of Houston did in the opener if the Sooners cannot get pressure. And this is an offense that's different from what the Sooners have seen in the past where it was just a two-back set, you hand it off, and you'd see a throw, um, you'd see Texas throw, but certainly not as often as they do now. And back then, of course, they'd break the huddle. Now, it's a no-huddle offense, so the Sooners, as we saw last week, was out of position at times, and TCU made them pay for it. Can't do that against Texas, even though they came into this game a little banged up. Sterling Gilbert has made Texas's offense extremely good. So, big thing is... Can the defensive line with D.J. Ward back, okay, and with Matt Romar, who did come back last week and, and did a good job, and with Charles Walker, can they get pressure? That's the big, big question for this defensive line. If so, like Oklahoma's chances. If not, could be one of those pinball-like scoring games again. But, of course, Texas themselves has been vulnerable. They've been very vulnerable um, against the pass as well. Their defense last week against Oklahoma State didn't do too good against the run. In fact, they led... A freshman running back from the Cowboys who I hadn't even heard of before the season 
run for over 100 yards. And that doesn't happen too often for Oklahoma State these days where they have a running back that breaks 100. But that's what happened um, against the um, you know, against the Horns. In fact, Longhorns in that game last week gave up 555 yards in the air. Woo! Painful, painful. And that's what happens when your players don't tackle very well and aren't in position to make the plays. Um, so big thing for the, for the Longhorns is going to be their defensive line. And last year they were very good against Oklahoma. Able to pressure the quarterback. And the Sooners last week got a little bit better at pass protection against Baker Mayfield. It may not still be an area that's just solved right off the bat, though. But it was better than it was against Ohio State uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. Pass protection. Again, last year, favored the Longhorns um, in terms of their defensive line against Oklahoma's offensive line. That might be the biggest matchup in terms of units. OU's offensive front. And again, getting Alvarez back. Big, big key for the Sooners. they got to give Mayfield protection because, like I said last year, it seemed like Malik Jefferson kept getting in the backfield and making plays. And don't forget, um, one guy that can make sacks for them, um, they've got uh, one heck of a safety um, in Hall uh, that can get to the QB as well. Jason Hall, who had two sacks last week against the Cowboys in a losing effort. So Sooners, pass protection, number one thing, because I do think they can get a lot of yards against the Longhorn defense. Finally, special teams. Um, this could be an area that favors the Sooners. Austin Seibert, after the rough game against Ohio State with a missed field goal and, sh and short punt, last week his punting, very consistent, and, of course, delivered with that field goal um, in the final minutes that took the lead from 3-6 to six and made TCU go down the field rather than getting good field position to try to get a field goal and tie it. So Seibert last week, his foot was viable, and Stephen Parker, who I thought played a good game on defense for the Sooners, was also valuable on special teams getting downfield on kickoffs. So special teams could favor the Sooners. Longhorns, um, been a shaky area, especially when it comes to extra points. Had three blocked last week against the Cowboys. Also had another one blocked against Notre Dame, returned for a two-point conversion. Otherwise, the Longhorns would have won that game in regulation against the Fighting Irish rather than in overtime. Big thing for Texas. I mentioned it in the early going, so forgive me. I'm going to look right in the camera and say, Longhorn players, how much do you love Charlie Strong? This will be one heck of a game if they love him a lot, because if they do and they don't want to see him get fired, they will play very hard for him. I think the Sooners will come in ready to play, but how physical will they be, we won't know until just after 11 o'clock at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Final thoughts on this game, if you're looking for defense, you need to watch the Big Ten or some other conference or watch Kansas State and West Virginia play football if you're watching the Big 12. Because in Oklahoma, Texas, I don't see much defense. It doesn't mean that there won't be turnovers, but I do think big plays will happen, and there's going to be a ton of yardage in this game. I'm going to probably say anywhere from 950 to 1,100 total yards of offense because, again, both teams come in banged up, and both teams come in still trying to solve their defensive issues. Does Charlie Strong make a difference as far as defensive coordinator as opposed to Vance Bedford? I don't know. I have no idea. We won't know until Saturday. I look for the Sooners to win the game, but they're not covering. Ten and a half, just way too many, many points in a game like this. I think it's going to be 41-35. Sooners by two field goals. They'll win by six, but ten and a half points, too much for my blood to say that the Sooners are going to cover by double digits. Uh-uh, not going to happen. But I look for the Sooners to get out of Dallas with the win and set themselves up nicely for the rest of the Big 12 season. Don't forget my show, Let's Talk College Football. I'll have that uh, later in the week. And also, too, my post-game of OU Texas sometime on Saturday evening. So check back with us on this very channel. Take it easy, and boom, sure.